This is the first video in a series of videos dealing with competition preparation and strategy. There is a ton of information on this topic, so I'm having to break it up into several videos because I want to get as detailed as possible. In this video, I'm going to show you a great way to create your next competition trick pass. First off, what is a trick pass? A trick pass is a set of tricks performed going down from one end of the lake to the other. Usually, you get two trick passes in a trick run, which is all of your tricks that you perform collectively. Honestly, you'll find that most people use the terms trick pass and trick run synonymously. For the sake of this series though, I'll separate the two terms and their meanings as I just explained. The first step is to gather as much information about the event as possible. The amount of info you can gather will vary depending on how well the event is organized. When signing up or inquiring about the event, you should try to find out competition format details like how many falls will the riders get, will there be double ups, how many trick passes do riders get, will there be multiple rounds, what tricks are allowed in my division, what boat will be pulling the event, how will the boat be weighted. All these questions can factor into your trick pass preparation. After that, if you're unfamiliar with the lake, you might want to take a quick visit so you can get an idea of how long the possible trick passes might be. If you've ridden that lake before in a competition, you're already at an advantage because you already know what to expect. Okay, let's create your trick pass. You can use the info you gathered from the questions mentioned earlier to help you create guidelines as to what tricks you should use in your pass. Obviously, if a trick is illegal in your division, then you don't want to add it to your pass. There are usually two ways to ride in competitions. The first is to just free ride and let it flow out of you. This is a much harder approach. You'll find some pros do this method, but it's much easier for them because they have such a large bag of tricks to utilize and pull from. Usually for amateurs, it's much better to practice a particular trick pass. Your standard competition will give you two passes down the lake and back, and roughly enough time to perform five tricks per pass which is 10 tricks during the whole run. Usually you'll be allowed one fall and the second fall will eliminate you. Double ups are common for advanced divisions so I'll add that to our trick pass formula. Okay let's start off with that hard trick. You know the one. The trick that you're just dying to show off to your friends, families, peers, judges, and the crowd. Where should you put this trick? Well some people think putting it first is a good idea because it gets it out of the way. This is usually a really bad idea, actually. If you fall on that trick, you now only have one fall left and you're done. That type of pressure can really eat at you and make your simplest trick seem hard. Strategically speaking, there are two places you should put your hardest trick. You put it either at the end of your first or second pass. The reason why is because if you fall at the end of your first pass, then you don't miss out on any tricks. Let's say you decided to throw your hardest trick in the middle of your first pass. Now if you fall, you might not get to do any more tricks in your first pass because the boat will have to take valuable real estate to get back up to riding speed. When throwing the trick at the end of your second pass, it is important that if you have a double up, you are still able to get your double up even if you fall. Sometimes there's a cutoff for double ups. If you fall after the cutoff line, then you miss your double up opportunity. Make sure you understand the rules so you can pull the trick just before the cutoff line. If you don't have double ups in your division, then just throw the trick at the very end of your pass. So if we aren't performing our hardest trick first, then what is a good first trick candidate? I always like to start off with a trick that I can land easily every time. Getting a little boost of confidence can start to trickle down to the rest of your trick pass. Also, doing a trick that you can perform no matter what the weight conditions are. You might be surprised by the wake the first time you hit it. Make sure you pick a trick that's easy for you to adjust in midair, if possible. I also like to start off with a big air type of trick. The reason why is because then I can end up in the flats on landing and I'm able to use that momentum to perform another big air trick. Usually your trick passes start off with your bigger air maneuvers first and then they decline down to wake to wake tricks by the end of the pass. This is a natural flow. Speaking of flow, you always want to keep your pass flowing smoothly from one trick to the next, if possible. There are two big tips you should think about when trying to create a smooth flowing trick pass. The first, you should not place a big air trick after a wake to wake trick. 
The reason why is because you'll have to take yourself out of the natural flow and rhythm of your pass and start edging out to set up for your big air trick instead of just smoothly entering your next trick. Another flow killer is having to do ollie 180s. Sometimes this is unavoidable, but if possible, when you land switch, try to accomplish a switch trick for your next maneuver. Having to edge out to regain speed or having to do ollie 180s to set up for your next trick can also waste precious time on the water. The last thing I want to talk about when formulating your trick pass is your survival rate. When I say survival rate, I'm talking about the percentage that you will land your trick pass. I would do an honest inventory of your tricks. Try each trick five times and figure out what your success percentage is. If you can land it four out of five times, then you have an 80% success rate for that trick. To find out your survival rate, get all of the tricks in your pass, figure out their success rates, and then multiply their success rates and you'll get your survival rate percentage or the chances that you'll land your trick pass. So while that 80% trick seemed like a for sure lock, you'll soon find out that if you put 5 80% tricks in a pass, your chances of laying that pass drop down to about 33%, which is only a 1 in 3 chance. So what should your survival rate be then? Well, it depends on how daring you want to be. I would say 50% is your median. To be safe, go above 50%. And to really try to tear it up, drop below 50%. Also, make sure to choose tricks that show off a nice range of skills. You'll want to show a nice variety of maneuvers on the water. Okay, now you should have a pretty good idea of how to formulate your trick passes. In the next video of this series, I'll talk about how to practice your trick run. Many people think that practicing simply means performing your trick passes over and over. That couldn't be further from the truth. There are many little things that go into properly training for an event. Stay tuned.